They want truth and they want hope. We have to give them hope. And so I want to thank everybody. Uh, Bonnie, please come up because this is your vision. Where's Bonnie Botoski? Where is she? <laughs> <laughs> Bunny has been amazing through this. She has been amazing through this. She has all this technical knowledge and she wanted to just <sighs> allow Jesus to use her and he did in a big way. So we just want to thank you, Bonnie. Absolutely thank you. We love you. <laughs> Ms. Norma Scales. <laughs> when, I, when I share a concept with Norma, I said, Norma, I got this vision. What do you think about it? I said, just close your eyes and listen. She said, okay, I got it, I got it, I got it. And then we're running and running and running. <laughs> and so I love someone with big vision like that. I love it, I love it, because there are no limits. No limit. So thank you, Norma, for all you do. Thank you, and I love you. <laughs> I want to ask Miss Ella Lewis to come up. She did the video for the sign for Stranger. Come on up. Come on, come on. <laughs> Ella, through all that she's been going through, the training and job and family, took the time to do the video for Stranger and you know I would see a tick like two people watched it then I saw 12 people then 24 people and it kept ticking up ticking up as we got closer to the event so I just want to take a moment and say thank you for taking the time to make that video and blessing us. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Miss Glenda, Glenda Smith, come on up here. <laughs> in the chapel last Sunday and I grabbed her. Oh, you need something to do? Okay, here's a task. <laughs> and so Glenda was the technical advisor. So she made sure the signing was straight and it was sharp. And she stood there and she practiced them and whether the choreography was good, Glenda worked with them. So we want to thank you, Glenda, for stepping in. <laughs> I want to also think, uh, thank Jason Jarrett. Jason, would you come up here, please? men about my vision and about them processing up. They were like, oh, no, 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 no. Then Jason came and he had the choreography in his head. That's how good God is. And he taught the gentleman how to step, where to line up, when to turn. This young man right here did that. <laughs> because when he and Stefan, I took them to the movie when they were like five and six and Jason said, Miss Love, I'm going to face my fears and jump off of your deck. No. <laughs> Not on my watch. <laughs> Let's go to the movies. I want to thank the disciples. You guys, come on up. Come on up. Yes, I know. You took off your robe. to God for Stefan Hatchett for playing the role of Jesus. Thomas. 
a pillow. Amen. Amen. And I want the dancers to please come up. know how to dance. I mean, when I'm with them, I'm like, this is working. Can I get that? And I don't know. I can't. <laughs> awesome job. Justin Bouchard as Judas. And I also finally want to thank two dynamic and very shy ladies, Caitlin Pearson and Gabby Jones. They stepped up. <laughs> Alabaster the box. Thank you, baby. Thank you. <laughs> and finally, I want to think to thank our pastor, Reverend Love, who. Um, when I have a vision, he'll say, Karen, now I got to think on it for a few days. And I bug him, have you thought on it? Have you thought on it? Because I would like for us to do it. So thank you, Rev, for your support and your love and your big vision for the ministry of these teens and children in the church. Amen. God bless. young folk one more hand clap of praise oh that's a beautiful job just a beautiful job turn with me in your Bibles for a few minutes here today uh, was out our time together we're gonna take chapter John chapter 12 we're gonna go to a familiar passage another rendition of the of the episode that was shared on uh, a second seen in the life and times of Jesus. We're focusing our attention this morning on verses 1 through 8. But the key on the... John chapter 12, key verse number 3. If you have that in your Bibles, would you say amen? Are we okay? We're going to have the King James translation up on the screen for you. I may need to slide this up just a little bit. John chapter 12, key verse number three. If you don't mind, let's stand together and just read, uh, just verse together as family to get our, our heads wrapped around our time together with three life lessons. It reads, uh, then took Mary a pound of ointment of spikenard, very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. As you take your seats, let's spend moments together. As Jesus begins to take a focus as you open up this chapter, uh, 
on the coming sacrifice of the cross. This powerful chapter opens up to us, three life lessons I want to share. This powerful chapter opens up as we take a view from the, from the box. With the, it's in the uh, amplified version. It says, so six days before the Passover feast, Jesus came to Bethany where Lazarus was, uh, who had died and whom he had raised from the dead. So they made him a supper and Martha served. But Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. And then it says in verse number three, uh, Mary took a pound of ointment of pure liquid nard, a rare perfume that was expensive. And she poured it on Jesus' feet and wiped them with her hair. And the whole house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. Because we just have a, a little bit of time. It sounds like I may be slipping in and out. I can't quite tell. Uh, first life lesson, if, if you're with us this morning, is spiritual maturity and sincere gratitude to Christ. We sacrificially give God our best. Spiritual maturity and sincere gratitude are expressed when we sacrificially give God our best. Be faithful. One of the things I love about John's writing uh, is how he makes it such a powerful point uh, to point out uh, to point out some of the, the not only the human but the spiritual components of Jesus. He 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 points to such detailed things like uh, him being in the house, him sitting down with the family, uh, him, him sharing in a meal, him being touched by others. And, and you may wonder, why such, a, why such a little details uh, does John pinpoint? Some writers have indicated that he, he makes it a point of, of addressing these issues just to, uh, to, to deal with some of the heresy that has taken place in some of the church in the, in the early church movement. Those that tried to say that Jesus was not merely, Jesus was merely a man or that Jesus was not human. Those that try to argue away his divinity and his humanity. John wants to make a powerful point about the little detail things. And one of those little detail things he brings on the table as he opens up this chapter is the point about Lazarus. He wants us to understand that the miracle of the raising of Lazarus from the dead uh, was a reality. It was a powerful reality. And here sitting at the table when they're, when they're dining together, when they're preparing for supper together, is one Lazarus sitting at the table. Uh, so if you're trying to say that that was merely, there are no miracles that take place in the Bible, John wants you to know this miracle is a reality. And, and Le Lazarus, he is who he says he is. Jesus is the resurrection and the life. And so I love his Mary. When you begin to think about Mary, the sister of Martha, the sister of Lazarus, having such a passion that, she would, that she, would, she would share this ornament and wipe his feet. A different Mary uh, in, this, in this particular episode. You have to think about just how much she has, she has experienced in Jesus coming and raising her brother from the dead. She has been, she has been walked through an episode in her life that would change her for, for the rest of her life. She's experienced saying, if you had, her and her sister saying, if you had merely been here, Jesus, my brother would not have died. She, she's experienced him being dead and in the tomb for, for four days, I believe the text tells us. She, she knows what it feels like to feel like the loss has taken place. And yet here is Jesus, whom she has heard and she has witnessed the, the powerful words from this man from on high, this God man from on high, seen him perform miracles in such a way that could not even be described. And to have, to have seen him now perform the ultimate, which is to give life back to her brother, has now changed her. Has now changed her. And so when you think about, when you begin to personalize this and begin to think now, why is it that she, has, she takes the very, this very costly ornament, this very spikenard, it says, this very perfume, 
and from the, from the viewpoint of the perfume box, if you will, to see just how it is when someone's heart has been transformed by a touch from Jesus, just to see how it is when someone's life has been changed by experiencing a walk with Jesus, how, how someone's perspective has been changed by having Jesus move, step inside of the point of their need and do something that only Jesus could do. That gratitude just has to well up. It's, 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 it's not only praise, but it's a spiritual understanding that has been raised to a level that this is truly the God-man, very God and very man. And, 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 and as you begin to think about your journey, maybe there's something in your walk. Maybe there's something in this journey that God has done that's been special for you. Maybe you witnessed it. Maybe it hasn't happened directly to you, but you witnessed it. How God has moved in somebody's life that you care about personally. How God has, has transformed somebody that the world may have given up on. Maybe even you thought then, your God, you can't, there's, no, there's nothing more you can do with my sister or my brother here. There's nothing more you can do with this person I care about here. And to see God move in a powerful way and bring life where there clearly was no life in that person, to transform the, the walk of someone that you thought was going down a journey that was, that, was, that was totally destructive, to see God change that person and make them brand new might just enlarge your heart and your faith for Christ. I don't know. I, it has done that for me. It has done that for me. And so I step, I step alongside of Mary here as she, she, she takes this pound of ointment this, and pours it over Jesus' feet and wipes it with her hair. And it says the whole house was filled with the fragrance of this sacrificial gift. The whole house was filled with the fragrance of the praise that was given towards him. The whole house was filled with, with this, uh, this, this uh, not only of giving the very best in, that she had, but giving herself in the process and saying to Jesus, I love you that much, and I'm thankful, and I'm thankful. And the storyline continues on. The storyline continues on. Two six, it says now, and Jesus is, Jesus, Judas is scary it. I'll take that as my backup. Thank you, dear. Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples was about to betray him, it says. And five says, why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and then given to the poor, the destitute? And in six it says, now he said this not because he cared for the poor, because he was a thief. And having the bag, the money, the box, the purse of the twelve, he took for himself what was put in it, pilfering the collections, the Amplified says. Here's a second life lesson I want to take away from this viewpoint from the Aleph, from the Aleph Baxter box. Challenges to Christ's commission and to the believer's commitment will ultimately result in the revelation of the enemy's corrupt character and program. Be watchful. Be watchful. Uh, I have noticed how God has this magnificent way of giving us insight and wisdom when we find ourselves in the midst of some of life's greatest challenges or trickery. It's fascinating that Judas uses, uh, he, he goes to something, the tug of the heart, in order to distort the message and the mission that should have been clear to him. He, he's traveled with Jesus. He, he's walked with Jesus. He, he was chosen by Jesus. He, He's seen the same miracles. He's heard the same message. Somehow in his thinking, it says, that, as you sung so beautifully, the enemy had gotten hold of his heart. Satan had captured his thinking now, had moved him and transformed into a different direction now. Clearly, his mind was perhaps on thinking that this Jesus should be a, 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 an earthly king. Who, who, who quite knows exactly what was, was going through his mind? But his character was beginning to lay out in front of us because it is said that he had pilfered from the bag, the collections. The Amplified says. And he uses the argument, and this is how slick the enemy can be sometimes. He uses the argument that rather than giving, rather than, rather than you giving that, that costly ointment as a sacrifice, as, a, as an anointing of, of Jesus' feet, as a praise and a prayer and a worship of Jesus, you could have taken that and just given that to the poor. Now, on the surface, some of that might sound like that's a, a logical argument. It might sound like, well, goodness, if, you, if, if, 
if, you, if you've got all of that, if you've got this that you want to share, then why not see if you can not have some, some immediate impact by going out there and feeding the hungry? Why not take that and putting a shelter over the roof of those who are homeless? Why not take that and go out and put some clothes on the back of those who are, clo- who are without clothing? Why, why not take that, that money that you have in your pocket and do something seemingly good for those who have very little? Uh, the argument attempts to distort the importance of worship and prayer before you get into acts of compassion. Can, can I say that, church? Nothing wrong, obviously, nothing wrong with, with, with taking care of the poor. That's, he's commanded that we do that. But doing that without having the proper priority and perspective doesn't have the eternal impact that God wants it to have. If I, can, can I just say it this way? If, 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 if we change the name of this building to, uh, well, I was going to say Walmart, Na- name it whatever you want to name it. If we change the name of the Compassion Center to something other than Compassion Center, and all we do is hand out clothing and hand out food, but somewhere we don't care enough about the people who come into the Compassion Center to share the good news of the saving grace of Jesus Christ, all we've done is, all we've done is gotten better dressed, better fed folk who are on their way to hell, but we haven't helped them with their eternal walk. And I talked to somebody in the house. That is not our primary mission. That is not the primary goal here. And so Judas is slick. I mean, he, he, he's, he's thinking of ways he can pad the purse so that he can then dip his hand into it later. And, 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 going, and he goes at it from a slick argument. Well, now you needed to give that to the purse so that we could take care of the poor. Rather than pulling that at the feet, he, he still, he's still a disciple following Jesus. He, he still has heard the message that Jesus has laid out. He, he knows what's going on about how he's healed all of those of the different infirmities. He's heard the power of Jesus' message on the, on the mount. He's, he's heard him. He's been beside him in the journey, snuggled up next to him, church family. And yet and still, he can get his mind so selfishly twisted that he merely can argue for his own self-interest, rather than in blessing our Savior. It's fascinating when you, you, you can't be surprised, you can't be shocked when the world throws those twists and those curves at your family. You just cannot be. It just gives you insight. God will use that to give us insight into how the world thinks and how the world operates. And therefore, we can come more boldly and more lovingly with the message of the good news of the saving grace of Jesus Christ. Challenges to his commission and the believer's commitment may will merely result in the God giving us a revelation of the enemy's corrupt character and his program. And finally, in these last two verses that we're sharing today, it says in the Amplified, but Jesus said, let her alone. It was that she might keep it for the time of my preparation for burial. But she has kept, she has, she has kept it that she might have it for the time of my embalming. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. And the final life lesson is this. Christ teachable moments lead believers to a deeper revelation and understanding of his plan and purpose for our lives. Be grateful. His teachable moments lead believers, lead us to a deeper relationship and a deeper understanding of his plan and his purpose for our lives. Be grateful. Be grateful. Mary has expressed her loving faithfulness, her loving praise, uh, her, her gratitude to Jesus for who he is. He, uh, she, she's washed his feet with, uh, anointed his feet with very expensive spike nard perfume, dried it with her hair. She's demonstrated, she's laid out her heart so that others would see and Jesus would know just how much she cares and how appreciative she is. As what happened, the enemy rises up and begins to bring the contrast on the table and argue against what has been taking place. And beautifully and traditionally, if I could say it that way, 
Jesus takes us as he takes the audience to the teachable moment. In this world, this fallen world that we live in, uh, this sin-sick world that we operate in, that we, that we move and breathe and have our being in, Jesus says the reality is there will always be poor. There will always be opportunities for you to give compassionately. There will always be, you will never lack for, for, for chances to make a difference in somebody's life in a material realm. He said, but the priority of our life must first and foremost be Jesus. But when you've got the priorities right, then he can bless in and through us in ways that can impact not only the poor, physically, materially, spiritually, but those of all different walks and all different shades, all different creeds and all different nationalities. He, he can move inside of us. He, he, he moves us toward a deeper relationship with him. And then he moves us toward a deeper understanding of his plan and purpose operating in our lives. And we cannot be effective for Jesus unless we're, we know him personally and we're walking with him intimately. Then when we pour it out, when we give of ourselves, there will be a difference in our giving. There will be a different heart and a different uh, impact of our giving. May I say it that way? Because we will not be giving looking for a receiving on the other end of that. that, that you know, in our flesh there's always that tendency. But, but he will begin to work that self itness out of us, work that self-centeredness out of us, work that self-righteousness out of us, work that self-glorification out of us. And when we give, it will be given with, our, with the heart and eyes of Christ. And the compassion that we share will reflect the heart of the Jesus who has poured into us, who gave, forgave us when we were not forgivable in the eyes of others, who loved us when we were totally unlovable and unlovely in the eyes of the world, who cared enough for us that while we were sinking in the quicksand of this world system that we live in, reached out and lifted us up through his sacrificial uh, sacrifice on the cross and gave us new life as new creatures in Christ Jesus. That's the love he wants to flow out of us and into the hearts and minds of others. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. And with his eyes clearly pointed toward the cross and the price that he would pay for your, your sins and for mine, knowing that he would rise on the third day, he lays out this teachable moment that was illustrated through Mary, through the arguments of Judas, now being taught, now being brought to the teachable moment of Jesus. Our priorities must first and foremost and always be him. And out of that walk comes a service that is pure and is blessing and is unconditional and is sacrificial and will move in the lives of many that you may not ever know but touched by your hand and the life of Jesus. Father, we just want to thank you for this day you blessed us with. We want to thank you for the young folk who blessed us with their demonstration, their drama today, their presentation in many art forms. Thank you for the leaders who have given themselves. Thank you for this church family, Lord, that comes together, gathers in your name each and every Sunday morning. Pour into us and pour through us not only the word, but your heart, so that we might indeed share this good news with compassion and with passion about the saving grace of Jesus Christ. Help us to stand firmly and walk faithfully with you, Lord. We're thankful that you opened our eyes today. We're, we're thankful that you kept us safe as we slept overnight. We're thankful, Lord, that you put strength in our bodies. We're, we're thankful, Lord, that you, you gave us a way to get here. You're thankful, Lord, that you allowed us this moment of worship, praise, study, and fellowship. We're thankful, Lord, that you're ever with us, ever loving us, ever providing for us, ever caring and guiding us. It's in Jesus' holy and precious name that we just give you thanks. May we give it with the very best that you've given us. 
as we bless the world in the name of Jesus. All God's people in the house say, Amen. The doors of the church are open as we stand together. We want to extend this invitation. We never want to leave God's house without giving an invitation, an opportunity for someone in the house to come and take a step of faith and make a part of the Trinity family, the family of God, worshiping here at Trinity. As our new members directors come, we're praying that you will take a step of faith today and come down and let us welcome you. Either on your Christian experience, if you if you know Jesus as Lord and Savior, or as a candidate for baptism, if you've accepted it, there's nothing better than knowing Jesus. He will pick you up. You ought to know him. Get to know him. Right now, today, just come. the church are open. He gets sweeter as the days go by. You ought to know him. The doors are open. Get to know him. Right now, today. neighbor by the hand. We're going to prepare to close. Thank you so much, Nate. With our heads bowed and with our eyes closed and our hearts humbled before the living God, assuming an attitude of prayer and lifting our hands to him in praise. Now unto him who is able to keep you and me from falling and present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, power. Now henceforth and forevermore let all God's people say amen and amen. Holy.